So, Gator, now that we've rented this highly expensive television studio... If you dreams, gal. <laughs> we'll wait till they're done. with reality <laughs> more than i have <laughs> um yeah so basically the videos are now pretty much real time and that means they're going to get a bit more random i'm afraid because we're sitting out a lot of storms here in the marine it's a lovely day today but it's not always like that and because we're sitting out a lot of storms um we can't always get filming so we're probably going to do some things that people have requested uh, some people want to see how we did the side panels, some people want to see how we did the autopilot, other people have asked us to talk about voyage. So it may get a bit random over the next few weeks as we fill in the weather gaps with and projects with things that, you know, we just need to get a video out on a Thursday for you. So we'll do our best, but it's going to be a bit peculiar until the good weather comes in. <laughs> One of our subscribers said that uh, they never knew what we were going to get and so... Uh, that's because we are very random and Bev's just said you're going to get even more random so let's be honest it's going to be random what is the most important thing you're going to learn about collision regulations tonight the number one rule is that there is no right of way. And if you doubt it, read Rule 17. In fact, it's so good, let's say it again. There is no right of way. No matter what you think, you do not have a right of way. Colregs is very, very clear on it. It's a combination of two rules. Rule 2 and Rule 17. Rule 2 says, hiding behind these rules will not get you out of trouble with the law. Basically, if you see a collision coming and you take no action to avoid it, even if you are the stand-on vessel, you can't use that as protection. Colreg says, if you do that, rule two will not protect you. You're out. Rule 17 says, if you see a collision coming and the other vessel is supposed to give way and doesn't, then you have to do something to avoid the collision. So the two taken together, rule two saying, you can't hide behind these rules for protection. And rule 17 saying, you must avoid a collision if you see one coming. Doesn't matter about the rules, you must avoid it. Those two together mean you do not have a right of way. It's not like on the road with a car. If there's a vessel coming towards you, you need to get out of its way if it is not getting out of your way. You, whatever else happens, you must not collide. That's the whole point of call regs. It's collision regulations. How do you avoid them? Okay, Beverly, you and I have um, read the call regs. We have indeed. They're all in this book. Um, and um, so give us... A simple rule that sums it all up. All right, a simple rule of thumb. And it is just that. A rule of thumb. It's something that we have made up. It's not in the book. Uh, just from reading it, it's something that we've hit upon, which, in our opinion, explains most collision regulations. And it is very, very simple. The least manoeuvrable vessel is the stand-on vessel. The one that can manoeuvre is the giveaway vessel. And we've got lots of scenarios to illustrate that. But I mean, a simple example, I mean, people chant the par gives way to sail and ex then expect 100,000 ton tankers to move out of the way of a rowboat or a sailboat. Um, if that big ship is in a, man in a channel where it can't manoeuvre because it's a narrow channel, then it's less manoeuvrable than you. You're going to be the give way vessel, end of, because it can't manoeuvre. Sailboats and power boats. Generally speaking, sailboats are dependent on the wind. They've got to be careful how they manoeuvre next to the wind, whereas a powerboat can more or less go where it pleases. So a powerboat's more manoeuvrable. So by and large, it is the giveaway vessel. How do two powerboats, which are equally manoeuvre, deal with this situation? Right, well, two powerboats, like you say, they're equally manoeuvrable, but all you need is a set of rules to sort out movement so everybody knows what everybody else is going to do. 
And a second rule of thumb, a simple one to remember, is generally speaking, for most collision regulations, you turn to starboard. You know, you'll find in most of the regulations it's a turn to starboard. So if both boats turn to starboard, then they will miss each other. And that is the general rule. Um, the other situation you sometimes get is a power boat going that way when another power boat is coming that way. And the rule is if you have a star if you have another power boat on your starboard side, then you turn to starboard. So basically you run parallel, go around the back of it and carry on. So generally it's a turn to starboard. If both vessels are equally manoeuvrable, you turn to starboard to avoid your collision. And do it in plenty of time and make it a nice obvious manoeuvre so the other boat knows what you're doing. Don't leave it to the last minute. Okay. Right. Special section for the yachties. All right. I'm about to destroy another legend. We've already dealt with there is no right of way. The other legend is, and I'm going to say it, power gives way to sail. Yeah. And I hear it so often. You know, you, you think that because you're in a sailboat, power gives way to sail. And indeed it does in very limited circumstances. Generally speaking, a power boat is more manoeuvrable than a sailboat. So therefore it is the giveaway vessel. But in situations where you have something like a tanker in a narrow channel, or you have a fishing vessel trailing nets, or you maybe have a dive boat with a diver down, or a survey boat that's doing a survey, they are not going to manoeuvre for you. They are the least manoeuvrable vessel. You may have a vessel that's not under command with uh, the, the, um, the, the day ship showing. In all these situations, you're considered more manoeuvrable than them and sail will give way to power. Another simple rule is, quite simply, when you're dealing with the bigger ones, the big ships and things, might is right. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe you're maybe once in a while you're correct and they should have given way to you, but as their boat goes over the remains of your yacht and you sink to the bottom to Davy Jones's locker and you're bobbing around in your life raft and life vest screaming, I was in the right! It's not going to do you a lot of good and your insurance company won't thank you for it. So generally speaking, just stay clear. Power gives way to sail will not save you. Remember rule two? You cannot hide behind the rules. If there's a collision coming, you must avoid it and you mustn't cause one. So generally speaking, power should give way to sail if they are more manoeuvrable than you are. Yeah, but like you say, uh, big vessels aren't more manoeuvrable um, and fishing vessels are definitely not more manoeuvrable than you are. If a fishing vessel makes a turn with all its lines out and things like that, I can pull the fishing boat over and, kill, and capsize it. It's no good. I can flip this boat 180 degrees very quickly indeed. I mean, I've done turns out there in the water where I'm going back parallel to my other track to the other wake I left and it's only a couple of boats, boat widths away. I mean, she turns on a sixpence when she's in the mood. Um, you know, but a big tanker, they're turning circles about a mile and a half sort of thing. So who can turn the quicker, me or the big tanker? Answer, me. I'm more manoeuvrable. So that's why we have this uh, simple rule. The more manoeuvrable boat, boat gives, is, way. gives way. And also, he's a lot bigger than me. If we ram each other, I know he's going to come off worst. And I will probably just about scratch his paint, uh, but he will send me to Davy Jones's locker. Really. What happens with uh, two sailboats? Okay, so if we have two sailboats who are approaching each other, the rule is very simple. The one that is in starboard tack is the stand-on vessel. The other one gives way. Now, if you think about it for two minutes, and we take it back to manoeuvrability, suppose the boat in starboard tack is very, very close to wind, say, say, he's, say he's very close hauled, then obviously you can't expect him to turn to starboard because he's already close hauled. If he turns to starboard, he'll go into irons, the boat will stop and then it'll lose way in manoeuvrability and he'll have to make another manoeuvre. So the boat on port tack in that case is the one that gives way because the turn is to starboard. And like we said earlier, in a lot of call regs to get out of things, you do a turn to starboard. So if you've got a boat in starboard tack, doing a starboard turn is not always a possibility for it. But for a boat in port tack, it should always be a possibility. So two sailboats coming together, the one on port tack takes a turn to starboard. Okay, so if we've got two vessels coming along and they both have the wind on the same tack, say they're both in the starboard tack, the rule there is the boat to windward is the giveaway vessel. And the reason for that is he's got a few more options. It's easier for that vessel to slow down and go behind the other vessel because he can run down wind much easier than the other boat can cut and go up wind. It's just one of those, but it's you can argue the rule back and forward, but the rule is quite simple. 
The windward boat is the giveaway boat. Okay, Beverly, talk to me about overtaking. Okay, overtaking is fairly straightforward, whether you're sailboats or powerboats. It's just stay clear of the vessel you're overtaking. Give them a good distance. If you're a powerboat, please don't make a big wash. It's just difficult to control a boat if you're being rocked around all over the place. And when you've passed the boat, do not cross its bows, do not cross its path. Just carry on until you're well clear before you make any other manoeuvres. It's as simple as that. Yeah, just um, give everybody lots and lots of room. Give everybody lots of room, but don't come past the boat, the stand-on boat, and then turn across its bows. That's just it. That's just a recipe for disaster. Hmm. You know, if your engine cuts out or you're a sailboat and you screw the manoeuvre up in some way or other, then you're going to have another boat on top of you. It just doesn't make sense. Hmm. Now, it's all very well knowing the call regs, and it's good to know them because it will get you out of certain situations, or more importantly, it will stop you getting into certain situations. But sadly, there's always the one idiot. There's always the somebody who doesn't know about them, or who does know about them and just doesn't care. Here he comes. <laughs> videos that we're making and things like that we've got blogs and quizzes and they can all only be seen on our website which is Salty Lass and uh, it's all under Yacht Masters. Okay, not for publication. She's laughing because I didn't press record. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Prudence! <laughs>